Yo guys, welcome to the Zelda Fiction. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto got banished and became the godlike Atsutsuki. Part 3. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. Naruto worked on his gamer shop for another hour before closing it and began mediating. After a couple of hours something occurred to Naruto to use his broken path while meditating and began trying to achieve it, and it was only an hour later, and with his chakra reserves down to 15.000 CP. But he achieved that and instantly he felt like his body was suddenly dissolved, and what was left was being pulled from thousands of different directions, but it didn't hurt, it just felt weird. As suddenly as the pull came it went leaving him in a place that seemed like a vortex of colors and sounds. Naruto tried to touch the colors just ahead of him, and just before his head was flooded by images he noted he did no longer have a body, but was nothing more than pure chakra. As soon as his chakra arm reached forward his mind with the images of a world where his father hadn't died the night of the attack of the Nine Tails, and all the differences that it brought. In that world he hadn't been treated like a pariah due to his father showing his ruthless side when they tried to ostracize him, that had caused Naruto to actually laugh at the faces people made when his dad was pissed off, especially Danzo. The Ichiha clan was not massacred by Itachi, as Minato had rearranged the police force, so that included members of each clan, while most Ichiha were sent to serve into the borders of the Land of Fire, where skirmishes with the Kumagaka were becoming always more common and bloodier. The Ichiha and Hayuga became steadfast allies once the teams of combined members of the two clans were proven to one of the most powerful weapons, that and because Itachi Ichiha saved Hinata Hayuga from being kidnapped by the Kumagaka ambassador. When the Rakage asked for Itachi to be sent there so that he could be executed, in fact they were planning to use him to produce a new Ichiha clan in Kumagakur, Minato had calmly flashed in the Rakage's office and threatened to wage war upon them before disappearing in a flash. After that Kumagakur stopped making demands on Itachi's head and created an alliance with Awagakur and Kurigakur, who feared Minato enough to actually band together. The masked man, who Naruto learned was called Abito Ichiha, was captured by Minato one moth after the assault and was subjected to Yamanka's ability to wipe memories away and become one of the most skilled ninja of Konoha, dubbed the Sharingan Ghost. After that Minato reunited all the survivors of the Uzumaki clan in Konoha, further adding the fear the other nations held off Konoha. Akatsuki, as Naruto knew it was never formed as Minato had offered them refuge in Konoha, and they accepted it. Nagato grew up to be the fifth most powerful ninja in Konoha, right behind Ibido, Jiraiya, Kakashi and Minato, and one of Naruto's best friends. Konan created an entire division that used her special paper-based jutsu, which wasn't a bloodline, but an incredibly complex area of ninjutsu. The Megakur was annexed into Konoha after Hanzo was tricked by the alliance of Kumo, Kiri and Iwa into attacking Konoha, but Minato attacked Megakur's army on his own and decimated it, killing Hanzo in the process and acquiring the Salamander contract, later given to Conan. While the rest of the Konoha's forces met the forces of the alliance near the southern border and decimated them in a battle that lasted two days. During the second day Minato joined them, causing mass hysteria among the invading army, which allowed the Konoha forces to finally break the stalemate against the vastly superior numerical enemy forces, in that battle, Minato finished his work with the second Tsuchikage and the third Reikage, he had fought both and left them live, and also killed the third Mizukage. Allowing for Yugura to ascend into power. Yugura left the alliance, declaring neutrality in the affairs of the other big five, and asked for peace between Konoha and Kiri, which Minato granted. The remaining two villages signed a temporary ceasefire which lasted for a full ten years. During Naruto's thirteenth birthday the hostilities recommenced and Naruto was paired with Sasuke and Hinata and his team, their sensei being Abito Ichiha. Their team was Team 7, but behind closed doors it was called Team Prodigy, because Naruto had already learned the Flying Thunder God, Minato used, and while not as good as his father was incredibly good, his control over wind was in certain circles, compared to Tabarama's control over water, and he was still thirteen. He had mastered the Rasengan and had created a variety of them, including here his own version of the wind release. Rasurikan that was far more powerful and versatile than the fourth's version, he had signed the Toad contract, knew over 30 different wind jutsu, and if you add to that his mastery over seals which was on par with that of Jiraiya the Toad Sage, you got a scary ninja. Sasuke was also called Madara's reincarnation, as he was driven by his need to surpass his brother, and latter his rivalry with his best friend, Naruto Namaki's Uzumaki, had achieved a three Tomo Sharingan by the age of ten. Had mastered six different fire jutsu before everybody realized he had lightning nature chakra, and had focused on teaching him how to master that element under the tutelage of Kakashi Haddock, the legendary thunder god of Konoha. By his thirteenth birthday he had more chakra than most jounin and an almost perfect control. His mastery of over a dozen ninja weapon made him scary, despite not having the strength of a grown-up ninja. 
Trying to surpass Itachi, they had discovered that Sasuke Sharingan illusions could eventually achieve the level of power needed to control tailed beasts, but he still lacked the finesse that Itachi possessed. All in all many people were sure that he would soon enough get promoted into the battlefield, and there were many bets on how many months it would take him to be promoted to Jounin. Minata had been encouraged by Minato to grow stronger so that she could protect her loved ones and herself. Initially she had been eclipsed by Niji's natural talent, but she had quickly closed the gap and had surpassed him by actually learning ninjutsu and later on even medical ninjutsu, which made her quite possibly the most powerful Hyuga of her generation, and there were rumors that she was a future S-ranker. If you combine these three young prodigies with the fourth most powerful ninja in Konoha, it was a sure deal that three of them would become S-ranks of the highest caliber. That was proven when, during the three years that the war lasted, they quickly evolved into the most powerful ninja alive, rivaled only by Minato Namikas. Especially after Sasuke awoke his man Jekyo and later evolved it into the EMS, by exchanging his eyes with those of his brother and Naruto, finished mastering all the five elements to levels previously never seen, and learned how to synchronize his chakra with that of Kurama, with whom he was had become a great friend. As he was seeing those Naruto forced himself to stop seeing that timeline as he knew that for all his willpower, he would lose himself to this alternative life, and he wouldn't want that. As his chakra hand moved away from the vortex of colors around him, he was bombarded with visions of possible futures from different possibilities of how he handled Orochimaru, though he never achieved to see what his plan was. One future that worried him was when he and Sasuke fought in a battle, and the Sage of Six Paths gave them half of his power each, and after a long battle, they became friends once more and returned to Konoha. The other nations were ready to declare war on Konoha, fearing the power it held because of Naruto and Sasuke. With the help of Takagi and his gift of the Emperor, Naruto exiled himself and Sasuke to another world so as to avoid the war, but that didn't satisfy the other nations that still declared war on Konoha. The war was terrible, and it ended when Orochimaru killed an injured Jiraiya and declared himself ruler of the entire continent and the surviving ninja, barely 2,000 out of hundreds of thousand ninja that had been alive before. This caused something within Naruto to break as the visions of this war still swam in his head, the deaths, the cruelty and the destructions were simply unimaginable, and people though that the tailed beasts were evil, if they saw that they would definitively change opinion on that. A powerful presence, thousands of times stronger than his entered the vortex of swirling colors and sounds. Turning around he saw the same red-haired man, holding a staff in his hands, his chakra body being the exact copy of his physical body unlike Naruto's own, which was a blob of chakra that vaguely resembled a human. He immediately recognized him as Hagoromo Atsutsuki, his ancestor and Takagi's student, but most people knew him as the legendary sage of six paths. What you think now that you have seen this? Asked Hagoromo as he came to stand right before Naruto. I must change that at any cost, even if that is my own life, said Naruto after thinking for a few seconds, that can never come to pass. You are truly an Atsutsuki, said the sage laughing. Of course I am, though I have taken to the more sane side of the family, replied Naruto. You speak of my mother, said the sage immediately becoming serious again, she was not always like that. Power hungry, yes, but a radical behavior was a side effect of the chakra fruit. I was under the impression she was you know insane since the beginning said Naruto. No, she was tired of the fighting of the other humans around her, and she hated not having the power our family had held during the past ages, so she ate the chakra fruit, gaining a sliver of the primordial being imprisoned in the tree, but also a part of the primordial's mind infected hers, causing her to become what she became, explained Hagoromo. For all the good it did, the primordial still escaped, said Naruto. No, he didn't, said Hagoromo to a clearly surprised Naruto. How? Asked Naruto the ten tails is still out there, I have a piece of it sealed within me. No, a sliver escaped from the tree, a piece holding pure chakra, though there is still enough chakra left in the tree answered Hagoromo, did you really think that a prison built by an emperor can be so easily broken? Well, yes, the ten tails escaped, and that never happened with the other persons that the emperors rewarded with the fruit of the Shinju, said Naruto rubbing the back of his head. That happened because the emperors protected their minds from the primordial's influence through their arcane blessings, well my mother wasn't protected from that, now don't get me wrong, the Shinju was never an evil entity or a good one, but due to its uncaring nature when it came to human beings, the emperors were forced to imprison it into its tree form, explained Hagoromo. So why did it corrupt Kagaya if he was so neutral? Asked Naruto. For the same reason you would, to free himself though he underestimate the emperor's prison and lost a sliver of his power, a small sliver, even less than a thousandth of his original power, but he still lost a part of his power, answered Hagoromo. I though the tree turned into the ten tails, said Naruto confused, referring to the part where he said there was still chakra left in the tree, having been reminded of that when Hagoromo said that the primordial lost only a small portion of his power. 
No, the trunk and branches did, but the root remained and are now teleported to the palace of the emperors, where no one but you can enter, answered Hagoromo. Oh I get it said Naruto hey if you were as good as Takagi said, why didn't you inherit the gift of the emperor? That was because of the chakra of the primordial within me was of divine nature, and that is the exact contrary of the power of the gift of the emperor, which is 100% of pure human origin, and due to the conflict the gift never awoke within me, explained Hagoromo. That sucks said Naruto. Perhaps but you can never miss what you never had said Hagoromo. Are you so uptight all the time? Asked Naruto. If you think I'm uptight you should see my brother said Hagoromo laughing. So I suppose you ascended in your deathbed? Asked Naruto. Yes, you know I only unlocked the broken path in my deathbed, well I had unlocked many other paths before then, well you unlocked it first, replied Hagoromo. How many paths did you unlock? Asked Naruto surprised. But the broken path, I unlocked six paths, giving me a total of thirteen paths, by the time my body failed me, answered Hagoromo. Any chance you could help me with my paths? Asked Naruto. No, you must unlock those yourself or you simply don't, in fact the paths you can unlock might have nothing to do with the paths I unlocked, and the broken path might have just been a coincidence, replied Hagoromo. Well it was worth a shot, said Naruto shrugging before something hit him holy Raymond, 13 paths, and you still needed your brother's help to seal your mother and the ten tails away, seal it away not defeat it, but seal it. I'll tell you something, but don't tell anyone of this said the sage in a conspiratory tone, I could have defeated my mother, she was all about raw power and no skill but even if it came to raw power, I could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her and win. Then why did you need your brother's help to seal her way, why not just defeat her? Asked Hagoromo. Because the only way to defeat her would be for me to either kill her or to absorb her body and powers into me, thus still resulting in her death, replied the sage anger leaking from his voice, though Naruto knew he wouldn't harm him, would you be capable of killing your mother? No, answered Naruto embarrassed. Sorry for my outburst, it seems that even though I have ascended I still remain a human being, said Hagoromo rubbing the back of his head, much like Naruto had before. It was my fault, still I doesn't make sense, the power you gave me and Sasuke in the other timeline was way below what you should have had with 13 pass, said Naruto. That is because I lied, I didn't give you half of my power, but just the power that my sons had in their prime with a portion of my own, enough power to allow you to defeat my mother if she was ever freed, but not enough to kill her, explained Hagoromo. Hunting in here I thought you never lied or deceived, said Naruto. Of course, most people have forgotten, but I fought a war against the demons that in those days run rampart in the worlds, after sealing my mother away, that was the origin of Ninshu, said Hagoromo. Ninshu wasn't made to be used as a weapon of war, said Naruto confused. No, me and my brother created it as a way to allow for understanding between people, but if needed be, it could be used as a way to defend against beings of greater power, but since people didn't have the patience to finish the training it took to master Ninshu, they took only pieces and warped them into the lesser form that you know as the ninja arts, replied Hagoromo you know. The basis of chakra enhanced to jutsu, sunade uses was derived from the warm-up exercises I did every morning. You leveled mountains every morning? Asked Naruto odd. Of course not my chakra control was even greater than your own so-called perfect chakra control, so I could easily control my power to keep it from leveling mountains, answered Hagoromo. How did you have that kind of control? Asked Naruto. Well, a lot of chakra control exercises, of which you today used only what Ninshu used for children who had many skill reserves by the way, and a perfect control over my pre-top path, but in gamer terms, Takagi said that I always had 20 more points in control that in energy, replied Hagoromo. Damn it, I seriously need to open that Ninshu practitioner and get some techniques from that said Naruto, so I doubt you came here for a friendly chat. No, I only came here to see which path would you chose savior or destroyer, answered Hagoromo. Only that? Asked Naruto with a risen eyebrow. That and I wanted to see why you came here. Replied Hagoromo. Ah that was because I was trying to see what would happen if I mediated while activating the broken path, well to see what path I chose you have to wait and see, said Naruto. Fair enough, though you would get the power I have reserved for you only when you will fight your greatest battle with Sasuke, or in case that my mother gets free somehow said Hagoromo. I suppose it's only fair with my advantages, I won't need your power except for those kinds of emergency, said Naruto before deactivated his broken path. The feeling of returning to his body was far from uncomfortable like, the experience of leaving it, in fact it actually tickled. As soon as he was back in his body he saw his chakra bar drop continuously until he was left with only 10 CP. He had never been so close to chakra exhaustion, and never had his chakra been depleted so quickly, so he was left breathing very hard in the ground, as his meter filled itself back up, his limbs shaking from the sudden and massive depletion of his chakra pool. 
The smile slowly spread across his face as he figured there was a third path, one that not even Takagi and Rachimaru could foresee no matter how smart they were. Unnamed location in a mountain range in the land of water. Inside the cavern time and space were distorted as a masked man stepped out of the vortex created by space and times being bent like strings to the will of a man. Toby was furious, the nine tails had escaped his grasp once more, but that wasn't really a problem once the plan would come together, he would show up if not then there were dozens of other backup plans that he could set in motion. What really worried him was the fact that the snake Sanin had shown up and chased away Kakuzu and Haydn, not that he could blame them, there were only three people in the entire organization that could defeat or even hope to achieve a stalemate with the crafty snake. As he sat on a nearby chair, he felt as if he was being watched and turned around to see a pair of yellow eyes watching him from the shadows. In a blur Toby had drawn his kunai and held in it in a reverse grip, slipping into a fighting stance, his Sharingan beepizing every movement of the snake Sanin. Tuckling Orochimaru stepped out of the shadows and sat on one of the chairs in the room, no longer wearing his white robes having replaced them with a full Anbu armor, clearly expecting a fight to happen. Ku, ku, ku that's very rude of you to give me such a cold welcome, chuckled Orochimaru, clearly not disturbed to have a kunai pointed at him. Well if you don't like it, I can warm it up a bit, replied Toby. Don't be impertinent boy, you may have your flashy jutsu, but I can still defeat you said Orochimaru matter off actly. Well I don't blame you for thinking that chuckled Toby. Why's that? Asked Orochimaru raising one of his eyebrows. Because I am Madara Ichiha, the strongest of all Ichihas to have ever lived said Toby, sitting in the chair across that Orochimaru, there has been only one who was my equal and has long gone. Cool, he totally outclassed you in every field, if you are who you really say you are of course, said Orochimaru softly. You didn't come here to mock me, what do you want from me? Asked Toby. You will tell me what you truly want with all the tailed beasts, and then perhaps I'll let you go answered Orochimaru. As arrogant as ever, Orochimaru answered Toby with a chuckle. It's not arrogance if can back it up, kid said Orochimaru in a neutral tone. You are skilled, but I'm one of the three people alive to be capable of defeating you stated Toby. You are wrong there are four, replied calmly Orochimaru. Ah yes I forgot Jiraiya, it's kind of easy to do so with the way he acts, chuckled Toby. You're only partially correct said Orochimaru. The fourth is Naruto, doesn't have the skill yet, but he has the needed power said Orochimaru, but most important, you never were capable of defeating me. Toby's eyes widened as Orochimaru rose with a speed equaling that of thunder, while at the time slashing at Toby with Kusanagi, and he was forced to resort to activating Kamui, surviving the surprise assault. Toby didn't waste a moment before gaining some distance and unleashing a fire release. Howling Fang, which filled the cavern with a cone of fire in the shape of a gigantic fang. Orochimaru was enveloped in the cone of fire only to burst in a cloud of smoke, the real one emerging behind Toby's back, and his favorite tojutsu move, the Blood Riper, a punch combined with his snake summons that easily shredded the area that he hit, leaving a bloody mess behind. Toby countered by bathing his hands in flames before parrying Orochimaru's punch and retaliated with one of his own, sending Orochimaru flying, or would have had Orochimaru substituted with a pebble. Using the temporary respite, Orochimaru flew through hand seals unleashing water release. Hydro Crusher, and the cave was flooded by a massive wave of water which was stopped by one of Iwa's greatest techniques, Earth Release. Guard Shell, it was only fitting that the jutsu of one cage to stop the jutsu of another. Orochimaru jumped to the side, avoiding dozens of kunai wrapped in explosive tags, high-grade ones. Their detonation caused the cavern to explode, though Orochimaru got away with just some scrapes, but as soon as he got to the surface, he was assaulted by a jutsu he thought was long lost, Fire Release. Volcano Spark, a jutsu that stimulated the heat of the heart of a volcano. The creation of Madara Ichiha himself. His entire body should have been incinerated, but he did something most ninja never thought about to do, he fought fire with fire, literally, and while Toby used techniques from Madara Ichiha's own arsenal, he knew somebody who was just better when it came to fire, and thus he used fire release. Blazing Circulation. Which saved him from becoming ashes in the wind, but still he was not Hiruzen, so he suffered from minor burns all over his body. The smell of roasted snake, there's nothing quite like it the voice of Toby rang from the smoke his fire jutsu had caused, though I like them well cooked. Tough luck, kid, said Orochimaru. I told you I'm not a kid, replied Toby, in an irritated tone as he appeared behind Orochimaru, and with a kick sent him flying. Because you're a kid to me, Abito said Orochimaru punching Abito in the chest, while he was distracted from the revelation, I admit your blood was a bit hard to find, but once I had it, I compared it to Kanoha's records. Why are you revealing this to me? Asked Abito, I know you reveal nothing without a cause. I needed to buy time, replied Orochimaru as he said lightning release. Electro turbine pulse. The massive stream of electricity headed toward Abito who launched his own counter wood release. 
green barrier blossom, which should have had in theory stopped even a tailed beast ball, but the electricity simply went through the vines and electrocuted him. Dumping back as Arachimaru sent dozens of kunai towards him, he decided to stop holding back and flew through Hant Seal's launching wood release. Imprisoning decree, a jutsu that simply could not be avoided as it tore through the landscape to capture the slithering Arachimaru, but in the end he won as the massive trees got him and began to drain his chakra. Only for Arachimaru to become a pile of mud. Sorry to disappoint you, but this ends here, said Arachimaru emerging a few hundred meters away from Ibido. Wind release. True Flight of the Sovereign was labeled a Kenjutsu for a reason, that being the sheer amount of destruction it caused would obliterate foe and friends alike, thus Suna forbade its use, but Orochimaru was never a team player and used it for the first time since the Third Shinobi World War, when one use of it on a crucial battle for Suna, at the cost of over 50 ninja. Like with the imprisoning decree there was no way you could escape the massive increase of air pressure as it bared upon you, turning one into nothing more than fine powder. Not even a trace you even existed in the first place, but then again Abito was a true master of time-space manipulation, so he totally ignored what was possible or not and just avoided it, but that didn't mean he got away unscathed as the pressure still hit, but luckily it was a glancing hit or he would be missing half his body, that was power of a true S-rank jutsu after all. Becoming intangible again he speed outside of the massive crater, large enough to fit a medium-sized village, and hit Orochimaru with a chakra-enhanced fist, or he tried to as his body shut down, and he fell to the ground paralyzed, his body not responding to his commands. Orochimaru slashed with Kusanagi and on instinct he tried to activate Kamui, only to be rewarded by blood spurting out of his mouth and his eyes returning to normal, as even his chakra refused to obey him. I told you to just give me the information said Orochimaru, kneeling next to the immobile body of Abido. No, I will not said Abido weakly, barely mustering the strength to speak. Foolish, child, I have planned for every possibility, and while you are certainly hard to track my attack on the Yuzumaki would cause you to run back here to check on the three tails, said Orochimaru, did you think I didn't plan for this possibility? I will not break under torture, Madara made sure of that replied Abido. It figures that only another SS rank could teach how to fight Minato used Orochimaru, though I don't really need you to speak, once your body becomes mine, so will your skills and what's more important your entire knowledge and memories. Your technique can't do that said Abito, frightened at the prospect that what Orochimaru was saying was true. Kid, I was just given my genius title, I earned it by inventing over a hundred of jutsu and improving twice as many boasted Orochimaru, the only reason you didn't become my new host immediately was that I had to perfect this technique. You know that it will boil down to sheer willpower and that I have in spades said Abito, more trying to reassure himself than intimidate the Sanin. Well, try fighting Hanzo with nothing more than two years of experience as a ninja and then come and tell me that you can defeat me in a battle of wills, replied Orochimaru. We both know you weren't 13 when you fought Hanzo and you were far from Genin said Abito. It served its purpose, it raised morale to know that there were three near s rank ninja in their middle shrugged Orochimaru, and while we weren't 13, we were around the same age young Naruto is, and we fought to raise through the ranks you know. Not giving Abito the time to answer he flashed through 30 hand seal, and his body was lit up in violet flame, his old vessel flesh burned as all of Orochimaru's chakra and soul was transferred to Abito's unmoving body, cracking his mask in the process. Once his soul and chakra was inside Abito's body, he took the form of a titanic eight-headed snake and clashed with a massive humanoid being, a Susanu, battling for dominion inside a mindscape. If that had happened in the outside world, an entire country would have already fallen as Abito's Susanu kept firing any jutsu he knew at the snake, which just became smaller snakes and then reassumed its titanic form. In the end, no matter how formidable Abito was, he wasn't a match for Orochimaru, for while he wasn't the most powerful of his teammates, Jiraiya held that position, he was by far the most intelligence, and in the end a battle in Mindscape was just a battle of willpower and intellect, one that he couldn't lose, not against somebody that had as little experience as Abito. As soon as Abito's soul was taken care of, he squashed the conscience of the white Zetsu clone wrapped around his vessel, leaving nothing more than an empty vessel that could only follow orders. The downside was that it would make controlling wood release harder, but he had always liked a challenge. As he finished processing all of Abito's memories, his brows rose before starting to chuckle at the plan the legendary Madara Ichiha had made, pretty simple, so simple he hadn't even considered the possibility it was the right one, well he had apparently overestimated the man and his puppet. One year, one year until we met again Naruto, and this time I won't hold back said Abito Rajimaru, as he and his former body disappeared in a vortex. A simple flicker of mana, normally he wouldn't have had noticed it, but with his sensor abilities unlocked, he could and there was the chakra, belonging to one Kakashi Haddock, his white chakra bloodline serving as a beacon even thought neglected and barely harnessed as it was. 
The Kagi, well he couldn't feel him, he had had millennia to master concealment techniques, and he just loved to test his awareness, but since he would be needed to guide Kakashi through the part of Yuzushi Akagur where there is Ided, the ceiling array protecting it had been enough to make Jiraiya leave, it made him predictable, so replacing himself with a shadow clone. Naruto retreated in the shadows of the ruins, waiting for Takagi to give him a reminder to be careful. He wasn't disappointed as Takagi moved too fast for even his new reflexes to sense him before he hit the shadow clone with a soft hit, which caused it to disappear in a cloud of smoke. Using the momentary distraction Naruto flew at Takagi with all his speed and almost succeeded in hitting him, but the old man was just too fast, even with most of his capacities sealed away in order not to blow up the entire island, with every time he decided to stretch a bit. Kakashi decided that it would be the proper time to say hello, much to Naruto's embarrassment as he was currently face down in the dirt as Takagi with one hand, as he looking at the nails of his other hand, whistling as if he wasn't holding down someone with the strength to bend metal with little to no problem. Yo what's up, said Kakashi with an eye smile. You know training, saving damsels in distress, eating dirt courtesy of old mans the usual replied Naruto, being released from Takagi's hold. Ah, you don't think first, you act, said Takagi sitting a stone chair that he had just summoned with a though. Show off muttered Naruto before turning to Kakashi, how have you been doing sensei? Pretty good actually replied Kakashi, if we don't consider the complaints of my clan for letting you leave the village in the first place. I didn't think that anyone cared about me said Naruto, except for a few persons. No, the ninja population holds you in great regard, but some of the smaller clans want you out of the picture, so one of theirs can become the next Jinchuriki and even get their hands on the political power of the Namakas and Uzumaki clans, said Kakashi offhandedly, as if it was the most normal thing in the world, you know the usual ninja political stuff. Ah, I really hate politics pouted Naruto they are so boring and troublesome. You know, for a moment you reminded me of Shikamaru said Kakashi with a chuckle so, did you really mean that you can make me see sensei again? Of course I can and I never go back on my word, said Naruto pulling out a small silver disc and rolling it into the ground. From the disc a shimmering silver portal opened, and from it Kakashi could sense the chakra of his sensei and his wife. Without warning dozens of chakra chains shot out of the portal and bound Kakashi before any of them could react, while an aura of absolute doom came from the portal. A second later Kakashi was dragged inside the portal with a girly scream. Naruto, with a shrug, sat down cross-legged. Aren't you going inside? asked Akagi, raising an eyebrow. No way in hell, mom's pissed, and I appreciate being able to start my own family someday, said Naruto shaking his head vigorously. And I was thinking you were going to give them some privacy, said Takagi face palming. Yeah that too replied Naruto before turning to face Takagi, so did you get it? Yeah, though Kusagakur might have found itself one prison short said Takagi, rubbing the back of his head. You went overboard, again said Naruto sweat dropping. It's not my fault the warden had the bright idea to open it, answered Takagi. Wouldn't that require a whole lot of chakra, so that only one blessed by the gods could open it and gain his desire? Asked Naruto, interested in the turn of events. Normally but the idiot preferred to use a kinjutsu that killed all the prisoners by chakra exhaustion and opened the box explained Takagi, the creature of the box he even forced me to go to level 2 of my normal power. Please tell me I don't have to buy new maps. Asked Naruto rubbing his temples. No, I was extra careful, answered Takagi with a bright smile. Sometimes I swear you're the kid and not me said Naruto. So you accept being a kid? Asked Takagi, a tad bit too innocently. Ag you're impossible said Naruto, pausing a bit before adding, I meet your last student. Which one, I had two last time? Asked Takagi. Hagoromo replied Naruto. Of Kakashi, Minato and Kashina. Takashi slammed into the ground held down by dozens of chakra chains, while he felt as if death was looming over him. That suspicion was confirmed when he looked up and saw that it wasn't just Kashina that was glaring daggers at him, but it was also Minato, though he was frankly scarier due to cold eyes and perfectly calm mask. Last time he had seen his sensei with that look, well let's just say that the poor chap wished he was dead for three days in a row, before finally dying from a very Rasengan to the guts, its effect made incurable and slowed down to last for three full days, after having been introduced to what would became the standard Kanoha torture manual. And Minato had been in a good mood that day because Kashina had said yes to his marriage proposal. Gulping Kakashi stood up, albeit his limbs were still held by chakra chains to prevent any possible escape attempt. Kashina came near him and gave him one of her world-famous haymakers, the only thing keeping him attached him to the ground were her chains. He didn't react not even to her next punch, though he did wince at seeing his sensei write something on a scroll. Why came the cold voice of Minato, causing shivers to run down his spine? Because he is a damn coward and betrayer said Kashina punching him again. 
Honey stop punching him while I am asking questions said Minato in a tone that clearly conveyed the fact that he was planning something far worse answer. I was a kid myself, and even you two got to accept I am not exactly a role model, said Kakashi spitting blood. Not that, I already knew that and told Hiruzen Sama to not give Naruto to you under no circumstances unless he and his entire clan died said Minato, not lifting his eyes from his scroll. I am asking why you ignored him in favor of the Achiha. You did what? exclaimed both Kashina and Kakashi. I did what was best based on my predictions, said Minato giving them both a raised eyebrow, I doubt you'd want a broken and perverted Naruto that killed his first man by his sixth birthday. No, I don't, replied Kashina. You still have to answer my question said Minato, returning to work on his scroll. I did it because Naruto could have been killed and with him my whole clan, said Kakashi. Who could do such a thing? Asked Kashina taken aback. Takara replied Kakashi. Fuck replied Minato looking up from his scroll. Who the hell is Takara? Asked Kashina, worried at the reaction of her husband. One of Kanoha's darkest secret, an S ranker created from a special training program designed by Danzo and Hiruzen working together, said Minato, it was supposed to create the perfect ninjas, both powerful and mentally sane. Only it didn't go exactly as planned as two of the 50 test subjects, who had achieved S rank, turned on the others and slaughtered them easily, along with the people working on the facility, continued Kakashi, I thought you killed them, sensei so imagine my surprise when I find Takara in my living room and threatens to kill me. My clan and Naruto if I so much as teach him a single ninjutsu until they give me green light. Who are they to think they can touch my son? Asked Kashina her chakra flaring wildly. From what I gathered, they call themselves, Judgment and are an international organization that intend to shape the human race to their image through wars instigated by them, explained Kakashi, I know of only one other member, Ibisu. That's worse than I thought said Minato, getting up and starting to pace around nervously. You knew about them didn't you? Asked Kashina. Yes and was planning to deal with them, but I died before doing that though I believe that Orochimaru should have already dealt with them by now, replied Minato. Orochimaru? Asked Kakashi. Yes, he was my man inside judgment, you wouldn't believe of what we had to do to get him inside it, said Minato, we learned that the organization has eight leaders, each of them supposedly on the same level as I was before dying. That's that's Kakashi stammered incapable of finding the right words for it. Yeah like Orochimaru could defeat you, Dadabeo said Kashina. I never said defeat them, answered Minato with a smirk I said dealt with them, meaning destroy their infrastructure, kill their agents or even poison or infect their leaders with biological weapons, he was quite skilled at them after all. So what now? Asked Kakashi stupefied from the revelation of the organization's scope. Now, Naruto is our only hope said Minato, we have to hope his gamer abilities will give him enough power and fast enough to deal with them, he might not even have time to get the full perks of being the emperor. You shitting me right? You mean those old tales of the age of the second moon are true? Asked Kakashi. The second moon? Asked Kashina confused. Yes, the moon of the sage of six paths is supposed to be the third moon, and yeah they're not stories, and Naruto is next in line for the title of emperor, and with it, all its powers and perks, answered Minato. May the powers that be have mercy on us said Kakashi, all color drained from his face, visible face that is. My thoughts exactly said Minato laughing alongside Kashina Kakashi's horror-stricken face. Now to lighter topics said Kashina with a grin that made Kakashi gulp in fear, did you finally settle down? No, replied Kakashi in an emotionless voice. Which means he is married and has probably a few brats running around said Minato, chuckling at the face Kakashi made at this revelation. All my little cute Kakakun is a father, said Kashina while pulling at Kakashi's masked cheeks, having moved right in front of him faster than even Minato's flying thunder god. Sensei, you'll pay for this, screamed Kakashi in exasperation. Nah, I'm dead already and this is just too good, said Minato taking a few pictures with a camera that appeared out of nowhere. Ashina, honey let him breathe, said Minato prying his wife from Kakashi who immediately began crawling away breathing hard and rubbing his throat. It's not my fault he is such a wimp, said Kashina pouting. I'm not said Kakashi. Yeah let's go with that said Minato, placing himself between the two steaming infant air adults, so who is the lucky lady? You wouldn't know her since she is a civilian as for the other mothers of my children they are Kanoichi, and you would probably remember them, but that would be useless since Takeda takes care of them all, explained Kakashi, his disdain at the village's practices regarding the progeny of their elite, dripping from his voice. Well that's better than most said Minato. That's barbaric said Kashina. Your clan followed such a practice too, and you're one of such children pointed Minato, earning himself a haymaker. They're telling me you approve of such practices practically yelled Kashina. 
The acid is a part of our way of life, and one that has saved many clans from extinction, said Minato rubbing his jaw, the Senju avoided them for one generation, and the only ones having Senju blood are integrated in other lesser clans. It can also be that Senju were one for unity and merged with other clans because of that, pointed out Kakashi. Have you ever read causality reports of the Second and Third War? No, well I did and let me tell you, the Senju numbers were ridiculously low when compared to the Ichiha that followed such practices said Minato. So, you to prove them for our own son. Said Kashina. Yes, if you want any grandsons that is replied Minato with his powers comes low fertility, and he would be very lucky if he had more than one child even with a hypothetical harem, but we are getting off topic here, so how many? Do with Takeda and another four with the other Kanoichi answered Kakashi, pride filling his voice the oldest is seven, you'd love him he is a mini-me, but he has got his mother's brown hair instead and isn't a sociopath. Well that would be Peachy, a Kakashi without a mask, and that isn't always thinking about killing and maiming, said Kashina with stars in her eyes. Sorry to disappoint you, but he too wears a mask, said Kakashi smirking inside his mask. You're no fun accused Kashina with a pout while Minato was laughing. Back with Naruto and Takagi. So spill the beans, said Naruto practically bouncing on his feet. Okay so the ultimate cheat is dungeon create, said Takagi. Yeah, I get it grants powers and such other stuff pretty easily, but it's far from the ultimate cheat, said Naruto confused at Takagi's words. Yes normally you'd be right, but the ID create has a small glitch, I guess said Takagi, when the 6th emperor created this current version of the gamer power he wanted more versatility in its dungeon ability. And what is the glitch here? Asked Naruto. Simple really, it allows you to do what you did on the first time you created an ID, but you probably don't remember it, as the simple aura of power of the beings must have been enough to cause your mind to repress such a memory set to Kagi. Before adding while chuckling for a moment there I though you discovered within minutes the secret that took the last emperor 8 years to figure out alas, it was just a child's curiosity and need for flashy jutsu taking over. Well flashy jutsu are kinda cool, said Naruto rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. Yes they are, but now back to me keeping my promise, said Takagi laughing at Naruto's answer, now all you had to do is open the ID for the thing you want to get, though you'll not get any exp from the defeated monsters, still the advantages are way to good, especially as it will allow you to grind through skills with great ease. I still don't get it, said Naruto confused by Takagi's explanation. Figures said Takagi grabbing Naruto and saying ID create. Energy regeneration hunting ground LVL. 12. With those words the world blurred away as the Takagi's dungeon enveloped him to transporting him into the middle of a gigantic canyon that stretched for as far as the eye could see. Inside the dungeon it was nighttime, and the sky was filled by hundreds of thousands of twinkling stars and one or two nebulas, but the most impressive thing was the proximity of the moon, in fact it was so close that it occupied a nice portion of the sky and bathed the gigantic canyon in a sapphire light that made the place look like your ideal place to build a house and raise your children. Such a beautiful veil to cover for the death that lurked within its shadows. The dungeon didn't disappoint as a whitish blur jumped toward Naruto, but instead found itself getting an up-close view of a spiraling ring. The blur managed to swerve in the last moment, although how it managed to do so well mid-air and traveling faster than sound was something that baffled Naruto. Skidding to a stop the creature was revealed to be a mix of a bat and a leopard standing on two legs, while the being's front legs were attached to its lathery wings. Screeching the creature tried to attack, but found itself blitzed by Naruto, who used his full speed to slam his spiraling ring into the being's ugly face, turning it into nothing more than red mist, saving the dungeon the trouble to transform its body into nothing more than particles. He didn't have much time to rest and ponder about the meaning of the numbers that rose from the spot where moments ago the bat leopard mix was standing plus 1120 cp sec. Plus 2488 mp sec. The next monster was a silver falcon, only that this falcon had completely red eyes and was at least two times longer than Naruto was tall. Jumping back he avoided the falcon's dive and retaliated with wind release. Blast Decree, a massive and immensely fast wind blade, supercharged by his massive chakra reserves and natural affinity for wind. Which slammed into the falcon with enough force to tear a mountain in two, but only succeeded in wounding the falcon, as it avoided it in the last second faster than even Naruto using his max speed. But the swish of its tail, it launched a funnel of air very similar to Suna's wind release. Tail smashing tap and air ank mid-range wind ninjutsu capable of crushing a man through a single glancing hit. Dodging the wind funnel he was meet with the gleaming talons of the falcon that would have torn him in two if it wasn't for an instinctive Rasengan forming in his hands and tearing in the talon of the falcon. With the heave of its, previously wounded wings, the falcon took the skies and just in time as the ground beneath Naruto opened up and he was swallowed whole by a titanic beast with eight legs and a cylindrical head the same size as tower. 
Naruto was officially pissed as the monster's jaws were snapping shut and his Renengan awoke, and with an effort of will, he directed his chakra into a lance of pure destruction, fueled by his chakra and emotions. The monster's head exploded as a beam of light tore through its head and hit the soaring falcon in the sky, turning it into a blazing fireball as it fell from the sky. Renengan shining ominously Naruto jumped from the already dissolving body of the monster as the numbers rose again from the ground plus 1190 CP sec. Plus 2644 MP sec and plus 1180 CP sec. Plus 2622 MP sec. Teching his stats quickly, Naruto finally understood what was happening, but had to dodge as two dog-like beings came toward him, but the smell of brimstone and the flames curling from their mouths gave away what they truly were, hellhounds. Vicious little buggers born before even the first demons and so inherently evil that demons took notes from them to perfect their evil act, not to mention being insanely powerful. Slowly four more joined breathing fire from their mouths, and their growls notified Naruto that they were enjoying his panic and that was going to end as soon as he made a move. Regaining his wits from the primordial presence of the hellhounds, Naruto gathered his chakra to do something that was until that moment purely theoretical, but right now it was that a risk dying, and although he wouldn't actually die, it would hurt like a bitch and take two full days to return if his calculations were correct. The hellhound sensed that and jumped him before the chakra was fully molded. Naruto's body lit up in pain as six pairs of fangs sank into his flesh, both tearing and burning it with their own special fire, but due to his very high vitality stats, his flesh was insanely hard and resistant, and living with a constant stream of toxic chakra within you made one pretty much immune to toxic energy so. Naruto simply ignored the pain and activated his Naraka path. With a rumble the head of the king of the underworld appeared and his face twisted into something akin to anger, but one couldn't be sure when dealing with such primordial beings. He roared the head of the king of the underworld, causing the hellhounds to whimper and try to flee, but a massive aureole of primordial power and rage quickly swallowed the fleeing hellhounds. That's what you get when you try to kill the king of the underworld, chuckled Naruto at the reaction of the king of the underworld and his satisfied look as he re-entered the ground and back into his dimension. His laughter didn't last for long as he saw a floating monster standing above him, the monster resembling a human with six firefly-like wings, but it had no mouth, nose or ears. Naruto watched in slow motion as the monster's chest opened to reveal a mouth filled entirely with teeth, and from it a pinkish violet beam came for him, and he could do nothing but watch, as his chakra had been literally burnt away from the hellhound's fiery bite, while his body was not even capable of moving, let alone dodging it. In the last moment however a massive golden dome that had a symbol resembling a hand with an eye in its center, a hamsa he recognized a symbol of the old world that immediately absorbed the attack without even flickering once despite its obvious S-rank class. Naruto whistled, impressed at the display of power, it was pretty hard to harness the power of a symbol, let alone do it, with most of one's power sealed away, and in less than a second. Takagi's familiar mop of white hair appeared behind the monster, and with a well-placed punch threw him toward Naruto's immobile body. While being immobile didn't mean he was defenseless as he summoned a great spiraling ring, wasting the last vestiges of his chakra and blasting the being to pieces. Takagi appeared before him and threw him over his shoulder, while another golden dome appeared defending them from various mean-looking balls of light, which slammed with great force in the barrier, but were useless as the barrier was empowered from a symbol's mystic power, making it immune to anything below an enraged Kurama, but even that was could be solved with a nice dose of raw power. In a blink the world around them dissolved back into the familiar landscape of Yuzu. They found that the silver portal was still active, and they had time to explain the full effects of this glitch. So that was pretty cool said Naruto his wound smoking as Kurama was pushing more of its chakra into the open bite marks, only this way of using can grant an incredible amount of firepower with minimal risk. Yeah though remember it's harder to find what you want to get in the lower level dungeons, it was just that this dungeon was S rank and thus every monster gave you what you were looking for explained Takagi, still remember you must never have more reach in than your current energy capacity or else well let's just say it won't be very pretty or quick or painless. I get the gist, more reach in. Very, very bad said Naruto, so you say it can be used even on skills. Yes, or to get specific crafting materials, but the coolest thing about this is that it allows you to safely layer ID upon one another, said Takagi grinning. But that still shouldn't be possible exclaimed Naruto, that would be like changing the very nature of the skill or instantly raising its level to beyond 100. It doesn't do either, but since this is essentially a glitch, it doesn't matter how many layered it is, and not to mention that each layer is at least twice as dangerous and abstract that it would normally be if you did that with an ID create beyond level 100. Well that means I'm not going in there for some time yet said Naruto upon hearing the last part, I might have Sionic immunity, but that would still be insanely dangerous for my mental health. 
Sanity is seriously overrated, said Takagi laughing, haven't you noticed that every powerful ninja has a weird quirk or is totally insane? Well being powerful can get to your head said Naruto shrugging, but I'm not exactly a ninja, and I'm the most awesome human being ever, Dadabeo. Well that is true you need to be a bit on the insane side to master obscure ninja arts and surpass all your peers and believe you have that spark, the same spark your father had, said Takagi smiling, let's just hope you'll retain enough sanity not to blow the planet apart every time you fight. So you think I'm going insane? Asked Naruto with a strange glint in his eyes. I don't think you're becoming, you already are, but let me tell you a secret, said Takagi in a conspiratory tone, the best of us are always insane, because we need to surpass our own limitations and grasp the true potential of humanity. You really think so? Asked Naruto doubtfully. Yes and I also think you'll be the greatest leader this world has ever seen, said Takagi. You said it yourself the empire has already crumbled, and the only way I can lead is by becoming a cage, and that is not exactly possible, seeing as I am banned in my village and other villages would either kill me or use me as a breeding mule, before extracting Karama said Naruto. You could always found your own village, you certainly have the charisma and necessary power said Takagi, besides I doubt money is going to be a problem or training insanely powerful ninja. Doesn't that require permission from a daimyo, secret locations and a certain number of clans to join for that to happen? asked Naruto. Well the land of spring might actually accept seeing that their old shinobi village was dissolved from infighting, while the new daimyo consolidated her power, said Takagi with a shrug, as for clans you do have a way with people. Well that's something to think about later for now we still had to make Kakashi into a gamer said Naruto, and he is about to return. So you're a sensor type said Takagi, that would explain how you knew I was here, were you for a moment I thought I was getting sloppy. No, I unlocked my sensor abilities, said Naruto grinning fun fact, they were being blocked by my own chakra, so that I didn't go mad with all the info it can gather. I have heard of such a thing back in the old days, but those power usually activate at a time of great stress, and you have never shown any inclination to do so, said Takagi. Yeah, mine are just too powerful so much that it would have taken at least four generations to resurge again, said Naruto with a grin. Ah that is certainly most unexpected, perturbed at the thought of the potency of Naruto's sensory abilities, as most repressed abilities resurged after two generations, three for the old song of the decaying star, but four was totally unheard of. Yeah but don't forget to add the fact that me and the impossible have a history of forgetting that the other exists said Naruto, and I am a walking seat of change on steroids. Perhaps you are right and we don't need to worry about it still you must exercise caution while in sage mode, said Takagi. Yeah about that said Naruto rubbing the back of his head, sage mode is off limits for me period. Too bad said the old man, that means we'll have to step up your training. No way, old man said Naruto. I'll teach you rebirth of the fallen, said Takagi causing Naruto to develop a serious case of starry eyes and drooling. That's a tad bit overkill, said Naruto recovering from his brief relapse, but there's no kill like overkill, don't you think so Kakashi? Quite so said Kakashi laughing while rubbing his sore ribs. Mother's bear hug, said Naruto with a deadpan. More like a dragon's, but yeah he said as he sat down cross-legged. She is a very scary woman, it figures she'd be the one to give birth to an emperor, said Takagi laughing at the look of sympathy Naruto sent toward Kakashi, and the later relief to be far from Kashina's hugs or haymakers. Well she is awesome like that said Naruto Takagi if you don't mind. Of course said Takagi throwing a scroll to Naruto, the same scroll that he had used his emperor's gift on for his first time. What is all this about? Asked Kakashi looking up from trying to heal his bruised ribs. Well, my dear I suppose you have heard of the Emperor's special forces? Asked Takagi. Yeah, but still the name eludes most scholars said Kakashi. It doesn't but then what kind of name is Gamer said Takagi, scoffing at thin air, the truth is that that is the real name of the special force, and that is more literal than you can even imagine. Yeah and he is one of them, the Emperor's personal protector which automatically makes him the leader of all the other gamers, added Naruto. But that should make him, what 3000 years old? Asked Kakashi. No, I'm not that old said Takagi, just 2300 years old. I think you broke him, said Naruto taking his hand out of the scroll, a purple gem clutched in his hand, wake up pervert, you're not shirking away from this. Just break the gem said Naruto. Okay said Kakashi breaking the gem while staring at Takagi all the while. Don't worry I don't bite, said Takagi roaring with laughter. No, he just slams you into the ground and then calls it a love tap, said Naruto scoffing before he too laughed at Kakashi's expression, after all few things could reduce his old sensei to such a mess. I think we need to talk said Kakashi, about the reason that I didn't train as well as I could. What has happened has already happened and there's no point crying over spilt milk, said Naruto with his trademark smile. No, I really think you should listen to this said Kakashi with a tone that left no room for discussion. 
Shot then said Naruto, his smile slipping from his face. Tsunade was furious and the whole council knew it, and it had nothing to do with the suffocating killer intent she was radiating, or the fact that the table was splintering under her light, by her standards, grip, no they knew it, because they had summoned the daimyo to Konoha without her consent, or even bothering to notify her. She should have no, no matter how big the festivities of the new season, the luxury of this one was pretty excessive, but she was too distracted trying to locate Naruto to focus on the piranhas that sat in the chambers. She wouldn't give them the pleasure of seeing her slip especially not in front of the daimyo, who currently on his way there to sit in the council meeting, but there would be hell to pay later. Anzo was pretty upset, the little worms had gone forward to call the daimyo to Konoha without notifying him of it, and he had been far too busy searching for the Jinchiriki, so he could recruit him into Root to notice it and buy the Hokage's look so had she. For all his dislike of the Hokage's softness, she had proven to be a cunning person following the daimyo's orders and then immediately searching for him so that he could remain a valuable asset of Konoha, even though officially not part of it. The civilians would pay for such transgression, and he wouldn't even need to move a finger but what truly pleased him was that they would rally behind him, complaining about the Hokage's cruelty. Bakashi had just returned from Yuzu, and he was absolutely furious at the civilian part of the council for pulling this little stunt, oh there would be hell to pay for this, but he feared the consequences of Tsunade's revenge. Most people called the Achiha emotional shinobi, but they totally forgot about the senju who were equally as emotional if more benign, but if there was one thing you did not do to a senju, and that was mess with family, and he had no doubt that the civilians had summoned the daimyo to put a stop to Tsunade's plan to revoke Naruto's banishment from the village on account of his help during the Moryo crisis. Another factor was the fact that Tsunade had finally been pushed at the edge of her patience by two years of the council doing everything in their considerable economical power to stop her attempts at getting Naruto back. The daimyo entered the council chamber accompanied by an entourage of samurai and advisors, though Kakashi noticed at least three of them were ninja, the daimyo's little open secret, after the dissolving of the fire guardians. As one all the people present rose to their feet and bowed at the smiling daimyo, his circular dark eyes roaming over the room and resting upon Kakashi with an approving nod. The daimyo gestured for all the people present to relax, and he seated himself in the head of the table right across where Tsunade was seated herself, his eyes filled with reproach as he locked eyes with her. Daimyo sama, I welcome you in the name of Kanahagakur and wish you a pleasant stay, said Tsunade, her voice betraying no emotion. Thank you all for your sincere wishes, but please do not let my presence interrupt your normal proceedings, said the daimyo with a well practiced, polite smile. Of course Daimyo-sama said Tsunade as all present members of the council know, this meeting was called to discuss the pardon for Yuzumaki Naruto for the services offered during the Moryu crisis. Wasn't he the unstable Jinchiriki we banished two years ago? Asked the Daimyo. Yes but his services proved to be detrimental to our defense efforts as he liberated one of our best ninja, Kakashi Sanhir to bolster our defenses while escorting the priestess to seal the demon away, explained Tsunade furthermore from Kakashi San's meeting with him, he seemed perfectly stable. His return would also be a great addition to the military of Kanahagakur, as his power as a Jinchuriki would make it so that the other nations think twice before taking any action against us, added Danzo. He is very unstable, though added Amura Takesi, clan head of the Takesi clan, we found traces of the Nine Tails Chakra in a forest, or more exactly what used to be a forest in the Land of Claws. He could have been fighting monsters sent by the demon to kill the priestess, interjected Kakashi. As if scoffed one of the civilians the demon doesn't need any reason to destroy things. Let's be reasonable, interjected Danzo, the nine tail was many things, but stupid was not one of them, or it would have taken something less than the first hokage to defeat him or the dead demon consuming seal to seal it, so why would it unleash its power uselessly and warn us of its supposed control of the boy with no reason? Shimura-san has a good point there commented the daimyo. Perhaps but the fact that its power was unleashed on that level means that the demon has a hold on the boy, said Amura. Or the kid has gained a degree of control over the tailed beast, said Tsunade in blank face that only five people in the room recognized as barely restrained anger. We must not forget that the fourth never did anything, no matter how small, without a reason let alone create a Jinchuriki that would have no control over his tenant. I keep hearing nothing but praise for this Namaka's Minato, and yet he did nothing worthy of praise, but win a single battle against Iwa and seal away the nine tails at the cost of his life, mind you commented the daimyo. Of course you didn't hear anything else about him, in fact I would be surprised if you did, he was always efficient like that, said Danzo with a small smirk. But Danzo-sama means that his other exploits are not as well known because the other great nations don't want to accept that their cages were defeated in their own home turf by one as young and inexperienced as Minato Taicho was then said Kakashi. He defeated three cages? Asked one of the advisors of the daimyo flabbergasted. 
No at the same time mind you, but yes he did Tsunade, the kid was always joking how no one of them could lay a finger on him, even if he didn't use his flying thunder god jutsu, and the thing is I believe he wasn't joking. To top it off he did what to Kachiha Madara and Senju Hashirama their bloodline limits, which were uniquely specialized against tailed beasts to do added Kakashi with an eye smile, he defeated a seriously pissed off nine tails, with nothing more than overwhelming skill. So he was our strongest and competent ninja ever? Asked a daimyo. I wouldn't go that far, but he was indeed very skilled and the foremost expert in seals in the whole world said Danzo, clearly not liking the comparison between the fourth and his part-time mentors. So his work is the best seal that the demon could have been sealed in? Asked a daimyo with a thoughtful expression. Yes, not even my teammate Jiraiya could ever do better, and he is the greatest seal master alive, answered Tsunade. Of course you would say so, the body that the demon has taken over is your blood relative accused one the civilians. The twice removed cousin that I have only known for a month at most countered Tsunade, her kai spiking for a moment, but still enough to remind the civilians that he was playing a dangerous game against an cage level ninja. Still that is enough especially for a member of a clan pushed to the brink of extinction, with only one legal heir remaining, said one of the actual advisors of the daimyo. As if scoffed Tsunade, the Senju clan lives on for while we have even spread among other clans, our unique life force and chakra will never fade, but will only grow stronger with every generation. The biased opinion don't you think? Smirked one of the advisors. My chakra levels have barely tripled from when I was 14, and their strength has only marginally increased, said Tsunade, surprising a great deal of people Kakashi here, while not inheriting the Senju large chakra supply from his mother, due to his white chakra, there is no denying that his chakra is among the strongest in sheer potency, and I mean one of the strongest as in the whole. World's strongest. Indeed so let's say could the boy rebuild the Senju clan away from the village? Asked the daimyo. Yes, even if he married a civilian his progeny would have the same or larger amounts of chakra and chakra potency, answered Danzo, hoping to sway the daimyo to allow Naruto's return. Good for thought, that is for sure said the daimyo, but one thing is sure, the Senju clan must never leave Konoha. You mean that you'll allow the demon back? Asked Morinaganashina, the wealthiest merchant in the whole Fire Land. No need to go that far my dear answered the daimyo, the best option would be to capture the boy and use him as a breeding stock before extracting the tailed beast from him and transferring it to another loyal ninja. Why this decision, if I may ask? Asked Hamura, politely. The boy has been away too long from the village and from what I gathered his departure did leave two Anbu agents in the hospital for weeks, said the daimyo calmly. I also reckon you must have heard that the Anbu operatives started to fight themselves and have been officially reprimanded said Tsunade. Be that as it may be, it's just too risky to just reinstate him as a Konoha ninja, and I forbid you from seeking revenge from the counselors for this, the boy has only himself to blame, said the daimyo in a tone that didn't tolerate any discussion. Though really is just because the counselors have put way too much gold in your and your advisor's pockets for you to allow the kid to return, asked Tsunade or control slipping, and the meeting table cracking and too. Careful Tsunade you are treading into dangerous territory warned the daimyo. No, I have had enough of this bullshit exploded Tsunade, I have put up with your intricate plots for some time now, but no longer, take your entourage and leave, you're no longer welcome within this walls. My decree is final any attempt to deviate from it will have Kanoha facing the wrath of all the armies in my disposition, threatened the daimyo, inwardly worrying that Tsunade might just kill him there and there, he had no illusions that the ninja disguised as his protectors would buy him at most a full minute before his body was broken by Tsunade's legendary fists. Bring it on, Kanoha has weathered tailed beast and shinobi armies, your samurai and whatever renegade ninja you'll hire will be nothing more than a fun pastime for my shinobi answered Tsunade, barely restraining from killing him there and there, because that would cause a bad reputation for the village, while an open war wouldn't cause as much damage to their credibility. Tsunade isn't that a bit too rushed? Interjected Hamura trying to defuse the situation. Choose your side now, Hamura said Tsunade her fingers curling into a familiar seal that every high-ranking ninja knew, but only the Hokage could use, and caused every Konoha ninja present to go pale white. You know what side we have and will always choose answered Kaharu and Hamura said at the same time, not bothered in the least by Tsunade's familiar hand seal. Good, now Daimyo-sama please take your entourage and leave this village while I am still feeling generous, said Tsunade. I will not forget this threatened the Daimyo. Nor I expect you to said Tsunade as the daimyo and his entourage scurried outside of the chambers. The tad bit rushed, but still the look on the daimyo's face, just priceless said Kakashi, causing the chamber to roar with uproarious laughter, from the shinobi side at least. 
From now on the civilian side of the council is dissolved, and only shinobi are allowed to sit in the council from now said Tsunade. As for your help with economical matters, the village will hire auditors for such a job, which reminds me the finances of the last 16 years will be revised. You can't do that bellowed out Morinaga. Of course I can and while the daimyo's decree forbids me from arresting you onto grounds of treason and undermining the power of the hokage, I can still disband the council whenever I feel my authority has been challenged by it, said Tsunade with an evil smirk, my great uncle, Taburama, was quite insistent on it when the charter of Kanoha was firstly drawn. The civilians sighed, not willing to aggravate their hokage further decided to leave quietly from the room, and even their allies from the lesser clans didn't do anything more than smile through the whole proceeding, further consolidating their belief that the shinobi were backstabbing beings not to be trusted. As they left their thoughts boiled down to one thing, the shinobi would pay for this affront. Tsunade on the other hand was very pleased at the way things turned. Not only had she found a way to finally get rid of the authority of the daimyo which was stunting their military growth, but also she had found a good reason to disband the civilian side of the council, while the shinobi side would have to wait for some time until her power was fully consolidated from her latest power play. Of course now she would have to post some Yamanka to watch over them to make sure that they wouldn't betray the village and if necessary mess with their minds to ensure their continued loyalty. After all they were all psychologists as a clan, and even without their jutsu, they could read civilians and most ninja like an open book and could decide for themselves if messing with their minds was necessary not to mention that they were fanatically loyal to the village and the hokage. Anzo had been very helpful so his life expectancy had been greatly increased, but he would die and not even his precious shuringans would save him, the fool thinking that a medic nin of my caliber wouldn't notice them, even as the room emptied her mind was in overdrive, mapping out a plan for her next move, now if only she could get in contact with Uraya and get him to bring Naruto back. The same day in, somewhere in Kumagakur. The fourth rakage was calmer now, and he hadn't had to cause massive property damage to be calmed, no just the thought that another Jinchuriki would be soon added to Kumo's military might, and the fact that the Jinchuriki seemed to have a measure of control over his tailed beast was a big bonus. In the poorly lighted room, a small group of people stood, the only people he trusted to accomplish this mission and propel Kumagakur to its rightful place as the greatest of the hidden villages. You have been called here to be given a mission, said A pacing around the dark room, the future of Kumagakur depends on it. Don't tell me we are going after the Kanoha Jinchuriki asked Eri, alarmed at the prospect of fighting a Jinchuriki. He is no longer Kanoha's Jinchuriki technically speaking said Dadai, though Kanoha will not take this laying down, the boy is a weapon of mass destruction after all. No to mention the other villages won't like that we will now have more than two Jinchuriki, added the head of Kumakagur's Anbu, which will eventually lead to war, and it takes time to train Jinchuriki. You're forgetting that we are going against the Nine Tails, and while the Jayuki will never accept it, he is terrified of what the fox can do, you fools, said B. It won't matter anyway, our R&D has just finished preparing a special seal that will nullify Tailed Beast's chakra for 15 minutes, explained A, more than enough time for you to neutralize the boy and block his chakra with regular chakra suppressing seals. Still we have no guarantee that the boy will cooperate, and I don't need to remind anyone that extracting a tailed beast is dangerous, even without the boy's naturally powerful Uzumaki chakra making things worse, said Derry. We'll be just transferring the beast from one host to Anther, said A with a smirk. The boy's powerful chakra will be no problem as there will be over 12 ninja giving their chakra to this process, including me and B. Ironic isn't it? The technique that will kill the boy will be a Muzumaki Jutsu said Dadai laughing, still war is unavoidable if we go forward with this plan. The three Jinchuriki will crush any and all opposition said A. Well his worry is not unfounded, Kanoha has won three world wars without once employing a Jinchuriki, not factoring that they have the best seal master in the world, said the head of Anbu. And they tend to produce monsters, you fool said B, do I need to remind you of our last meeting with their latest monster during the war, you fool. Enough of this nonsense shouted A, standing up, I will not tolerate your whining anymore, this was me letting you know of your assignment not asking your opinion. This will still cause World War 4, kid said a figure seated in the shadows, Kumo's very own version of Danzo, but we will be invincible with the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails on our side. Finally someone with some sense said A. Sai too, really said Derry face palming last time he agreed on something was on the kidnapping of the Hyuga, and that ended well, didn't it? A minor inconvenience said Sai too. Of course scoffed odd I if you are so assured it will work why don't you go with the team that is assigned to this mission. I think I will said Saitu stepping out of the shadows, revealing an old bald man with a long beard leaning on a cane. You're too old for this said A. That's not what the 5th platoon of Anbu though when I decimated them last week, said the old man with a chuckle, this old weary bones still can live up to their old S rank classification. 
I don't trust him, you fool said B. Good, you live longer that way, but this is for the glory of Kumagakur, so you can at least trust me on this mission, said the old man. If you think you can do it, I'll place you on the team, but at the first sign of not being up to it, you'll be come back said A. Of course, Lord Rakage said Saitu bowing slightly. But you're dismissed, said the Rakage massaging his temples, and the participants wisely chose to leave quickly and quietly from the room. You know that Beardy has a plan if he agreed to leave the village so easily said Mabui. You think I don't know said A, but my hands are tied where his participation is involved. Your father was a fool said Mabui. He had no choice, we needed him back then, said A, his skill with fire release is what kept sand from penetrating our defenses these last two wars. Still he allowed to gather too much influence. Unfortunately we can't do a thing now besides he is an old man who will die anytime soon said A. Hopefully said Mabui putting a stack of papers in front of A, these are the paperwork you need to fill for this mission. The Rakage's anguished no could be heard all over the village. And soon a, Gara gazed from the windows of one of the Kazakiyaj's special manor. This manor being located in the middle of the desert which made it his favorite place in the whole country. The wind ruffled his hair as he gazed at the endless sea of sand, wondering about the newest challenge to the stability of his reign. Of course he could just kill the faction that opposed him, but he didn't want to rule by fear alone as his predecessor had done, no, he wanted to rule by the love of the people, much like the Hokages of Kanoha had done. In his humble opinion love is better than fear, after all fear can get you so far, but love well suffices to say there was a reason why Kanoha had never deployed a Jinchuriki, or why they hadn't gathered all of them. This new faction wanted to capture Naruto for their own uses, even though he had explained to them the foolishness of such endeavor. It was simply impossible to capture Naruto or the Nine Tails without a seal master of the same caliber of Jiraiya or some of the other best seal masters in the world, which soon it didn't pauses. Even if they did, Naruto was his friend and anyone that tried to harm him was going to have to go through him, and quite frankly, he had gained enough skill to make most S-rank shinobi think twice about fighting him, and that was without using the One Tail's power to enhance his own. Hopefully Kankuro would convince them that Naruto would side with them and thus calm down the situation before he had to deal with them personally, which would be really bad for Suna, seeing as some of the most powerful shinobi of Suna were among that faction. His sand informed him of the intruders before they stepped inside the manor. The sad look replaced the serene look on his face as the fragile peace within Suna had finally been broken. He didn't move from his position as three people touched down on the wooden floor. Ara, we're sorry about this, but it's all about the good of Suna Baki claimed preparing for a fight. No, it's about appeasing your lust for power, rebuffed Gara. It's about fixing the damage you and your father did to this once proud village, shouted one of the other two masked ninja. Fools, even if you somehow succeed in subduing me you'll never get past Amari, chuckled Gara or Kankuro for that matter. Neither will be a problem, said Baki unsealing a scroll revealing the corpse of Kankuro Tamari will join him as we speak. The water Cretans hissed Gara turning to face them. What will you do? Taunted one of the masked shinobi, this mansion is sealed within a barrier bubble that makes your demon's power useless, and without your sand you are useless. Nerus is right, surrender there is no need for further bloodshed, spoke Baki softly. A fool like always, Sensei laughed bitterly Gara. you killed my blood and expect me to just accept this and join you. Sand rose like a giant tidal wave blocking the sunlight and plunging the entire mansion in complete darkness. The sand was never for the one tail, it was always mine, and you're about to find out how much better I've grown in the past two years, whispered Gara, just adding to the fear his would-be assassins were feeling in that moment. Seriously? Asked Tamari in disbelief, looking at her sensei in the art of fan jutsu. You are an obstacle in the way of Suna's growth as the ultimate power spat out Kaizo, a middle-aged man with short brown hair, gray eyes and a brown beard, with flecks of white mixed in it. He stood wearing the standard Suna Janin uniform, except for the giant war fan he held and fully opened. Ara will kill you for this she threatened. He is being dealt with right now, replied Kaizo with a cruel grin. So, this is how it is going to be, mused Tamari opening her war fan. Instead of answering Kaizo, blurred forward with the all the speed of an air ank ninja fully intent of striking Tamari down. Tamari disappeared like a mirage right before Kaizo's attack connected. Wind release. Bladed hurricane came from Kaizo's right side, and he acting on reflex jumped on the left, only to crash onto the mini hurricane that Tamari had summoned. He survived out of sheer luck, as the technique wasn't as powerful as it should have been, and his control over his wind chakra saved him from being turned into a mangled mess of flesh. He wasn't allowed a respite as Tamari blurred right in front of him and hit him with all her might. The blow had him dripping blood from his mouth as he bit his tongue from the shock of such a powerful blow. With a single swing of his fan he unleashed his own wind release. Bladed hurricane which manifested as a massive 20 meters tall funnel wind that would turn anyone caught into it in confetti. 
the technique was too damn flashy to actually connect with Tamari, but it would give him a chance to recover from the shock of the newfound skill of his student. He didn't have a chance as hand shot out from the sand and dragged him within the sand dunes. A simple downward swipe of his war fan caused a massive explosion that created a large crater with his sitting in the center unaffected. He didn't have a moment of respite as a massive gust of wind threw him of his feet and slammed him into the sand dunes. Tamari smiled as she approached Kaizo with a light step and hit him at the back of his head, knocking him out. Kneeling besides him she sealed him in a scroll and immediately headed for Gara's favorite retreat, she was sure that Kankuro would enjoy trying his new shinobi truth serum on the poor chap, as she enjoyed using her new jinjutsu. Perfect siege making him dream a whole battle while she knocked him out without him noticing a thing. The new Mizukage was pacing nervously around her office, waiting her options. Her village was weak, clinging to their status of one of the great powers by the skin of their teeth. They had no Jinchuriki and the only Jinchuriki out there that they had a chance to get were the Six Tails and Nine Tails Jinchuriki. The problem was that they had practically no leads on the Six Tails Jinchuriki, and the only fresh lead was the one of the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. Still going after the Jinchuriki of the most powerful tailed beast was very, very dangerous, especially since they had no powerful shinobi they could spare to hunt the Jinchuriki. However having no Jinchuriki would announce to the world their weakness and Kumo would certainly jump at the chance to further expand their influence in their century-old struggle to topple Kanahagakur from their place as the top dog. Their hands were tied either send a group of shinobi to their certain death, using the five pillar of heaven seal, to bring back the nine tails to their village, or risk an all-out war with Kumo, which they would certainly lose in their current state. With a glare she fixed an alliance proposal from Iwa which was practically them accepting to become a next from Iwa, which the proud people of Kiri would never accept. With a resigned sigh she released a mini skewl chakra ripple that notified her most loyal shinobi, Ao, that he was required. A few seconds later a silent thump notified her that Ao had entered the room, and she turned around from gazing at the village preparing for the incoming morning storm, to face her trusted comrade. You came to a decision. Asked Ao, still bowed before his cage. You know that we have no other choice, replied Mei. Prepare a team and bring us back the nine tails. It's goodbye then nodded Ao perfectly calm. Hopefully no, but in this line of work we can't afford wishful thinking, smiled bitterly, Mei. Just don't forget your paperwork, Ao reminded her moving to leave the room, it wouldn't do for the village to fall, because you didn't have me to remind you to do your paperwork. Only you may spoke softly, only you would think of such a thing right now. You know why Ao replied before disappearing in a lightning fast body flicker. I'm sorry, Mei whispered to the empty room as a single tear slid down her cheek. Dozens of masked figures were watching a shipyard with some pretty amazing technology, which made the tech that the big five used look like they used sticks and leaves. A signal was quickly sent with a small burst of chakra, signaling the rest of their forces to signal they had found one of their targets. Dozens of miles away a group of masked men stopped for a moment before resuming their tree hopping toward their target, the trees becoming a blur due to their speed. Pillar B stood on the sandy beach of a country that he didn't even know the name of, their tracking seal having leaded them here after three weeks of silence. His body was filled with adrenaline at the prospect of fighting the Jinchuriki, a force of nature if the state of the forest when their experts got there was any indication. Eri silently approached his side with a look of utter boredom, though B knew he was as nervous as him if not more so. Watching the squad of Anbu with them, they knew many would never return in fact their own survival was very doubtful, even though they were both s rank, not counting old man Saitu or Dadai, because their power and usefulness against the Nine Tails was limited at best. Before leaving they had been treated with some of the old records of the Nine Tails that the village had in their archives, and it was troubling indeed. While their sealing was not as good as that of the Uzumaki clan, they still had memory seal that offered images from the mind of Ninja, who had survived the expedition of the Gold and Silver Brothers against the Nine Tails. What they saw gave a whole new meaning to overpowered, most people though the late Rakage was overpowered or even him with his perfect control over his tenant, but the Fox had decimated the entire force within less than five minutes, and the Gold and Silver Brothers had survived by throwing themselves in the Fox's throat. The forest where the Massac battle took place was reduced to nothing more than ashes raining from the heavens like black snow, and the towering columns of smoke rising from giant fires that melted the earth into rivers of flowing lava. The destruction was something you had to see to believe, because he had tried to rationalize seeing the fox batting 2s rank ninja like one would flick away annoying gnats. Still Saitu had confirmed that it was the truth and the nine-tailed fox even inside a vessel that couldn't, hopefully, access the full powers of his tenant, was perhaps the most dangerous foe after the yellow flash, especially if the fox took over. The plan to neutralize it was simple use the modified Yuzumaki seal, the gargantuan whirlpool, to practically cut off the tailed beast from the vessel, allowing for him and Derry to disable the kid, and he cover him from head to toe with chakra-suppressing seal. 
then they would take the vessel to Kumo where using Yumashi Shikabahikoji's command seal to transfer the tailed beast to another loyal Kumo shinobi, perhaps his own brother. An odd came from Site 2 after he finished consulting with the specialized device made to hunt one Naruto Uzumaki, and they departed. A group of masked men silently spread across the shipyard's perimeter, and few of them entered underwater, preparing for an assault on the shipyard, while the rest of their forces moved to circle their true target. Once in position they waited for precision was the name of the game today, and it all depended on how coordinated their strike was. Ao deactivated his tailed best compass, the name itself was a misnomer, since the compass could track any being provided you had a sliver of their chakra, sadly their last Jinchuriki was careful to destroy all samples of his chakra when he left, certainly with the aid of an accomplished seal master. Now the name itself came from the fact that the second Mizukage created it mainly to avert them of the movement of the Jinchuriki, as the chakra of a free-tailed beast was too dense and would destroy the device, and his masterful use of this device saved Kiri from total annihilation. Today it would serve the same purpose for this Jinchuriki was the last hope for Kurigakur. He was nervous not because he feared for his life, for he had come to accept that he would probably die in this mission, no he was worried because the Nine Tails was a big unknown. The only persons to have ever defeated it were legends that could easily cumber stomp the Big Five all on their own, but hopefully it would be severely limited from its imprisonment within a vessel who couldn't use all of its power, the chakra samples they found being too rough to belong to someone who could perfectly use the tailed beast power. The compass was however having difficulty tracking down their target because until three days ago the compass simply didn't work, and then since yesterday it started pointing at different points simultaneously, similar to a perfect clone technique or time-space jutsu. I really hoped it was the first because clones you could deal with, but time-space jutsu were something no shinobi that had any self-preservation instincts wanted to fight, ever. The signal came and all teams moved in perfect synchrony. The first strike came from the underwater teams which used a barrage of really powerful black spheres to blow up the 12 ships in construction, turning them to molten slag. In the initial shock over two dozen masked ninja landed between the people present and attacked viciously. The unprepared shinobi closer to the outer lines of the camp were quickly slaughtered by precise strikes of silvery broadswords. The others recovered quickly enough, and hundreds of kunai covered in explosive tags rained upon the masked shinobi exploding in mid-air, filling the air in smoke and deadly shrapnel. Over half of the masked ninja didn't come out of the smoke, but those who did attacked with vengeance a dozen black spheres were launched from their outstretched palms and exploded with various degrees of power. The sheer power of such counter-attack shocked some of the younger recruits as they saw their comrades blown up to pieces, but the veterans fired continued barrages of explosive tags that took out another eight of the masked shinobi. Their advantage was short-lived however, as five masked ninja emerged from the water and attacked with water release. Feeding frenzy and wind release. Great migration combos which tore through their clustered formation like a hot knife through butter. As per protocol one of the defending shinobi sent a signal over their wireless communication devices, though that cost him his head literally as a water shark enhanced by wind birds tore through him and struck the sand a few feet from him, creating a man-sized crater. Miles away 30 shinobi were dispatched to help the attacked forces. On that beach the stunned defenders had recovered their wits and were now firing their own jutsu, mainly lighting and water, but with some wind mixed in which earned them another three kills, but that was it, since the masked ninja had achieved their goal, and with less people, they made full use of their prenatural speed and attacked their foes using quick kunai and silver broadsword strikes, quickly thinning their ranks as though they were teleporting. When a signal came to them, the masked ninja stopped for a moment getting one of them killed due to his proximity, but the rest dodged in time the five air rank lighting jutsu heading for them. The beach was quickly filled with the unmistakable sound of whirling chakra, and the masked ninja disappeared, and in the next moment the remaining 45 defenders fell to the ground, their hearts having been turned to red mist from the grinding power of the legendary Rasengan. The five masked ninja that disappeared in a plume of smoke, leaving behind only a beach full of corpses for the incoming help to find. The city was now open for attack their flying machines having flown away, and what remained were a mix of Chunin and some Jounin level ninja, but unfortunately they were not enough to stop the fury of approximately a hundred of the masked shinobi, who had stealthily surrounded the city hidden in the jungle vines. The first to fall were three dozen patrolling shinobi that didn't even have the chance to notice they were not alone, before they dropped dead from a fatal case of kunai to the back of their head. Their approach was halted by a golden dome snapping into place killing eleven of the masked ninja. There were many ways to disable few injutsu barriers, but the most reliable and quickest method was good all raw power, and unfortunately for the defenders, that was not a problem for the attacking shinobi. Dozens of great spiraling rings meet the barrier and exploded in a massive light show, which was followed by dozens minor explosion of lone great spiraling rings, impacting the nigh impenetrable barrier. 
In 1 minute 35 seconds the barrier ceased to exist, as the few Injutsu arrays exploded in a shower of shrapnel from the chakra overload. The masked shinobi were met by turret fire which thinned their ranks considerably before they found shelter in the city walls. The continuous fire made moving further impossible, and not even the walls were secure enough as they exploded every now and then in showers of shrapnel, and reducing his forces to less than half of their original numbers. But the TSK-1 of the Mask Shinobi moved forward, a hastily erected wall of chakra-enhanced wall stopped the projectiles in preparation of his new technique. Just as the wood wall fell away, the Mask Shinobi's voice boomed rebirth arrows, and hundreds of ruby-red bolts of energy came out of his outstretched palms and impacted the 38 turrets located in the city, turning them to gas from the power they packed. The shockwave of the explosion served to throw the awaiting Soren in of balance, and the remaining Mask Shinobi moved out whistling at the destruction the mana spell had caused, even though it cost close to 10.000 mana points to cast in the first place, but then again, they hadn't had it for long enough to use it efficiently. The shocked Soren in never stood a chance as a tidal wave of Mask Shinobi descended upon the with various cries of orange rules and glory for the Raymond Emperor. The compass activated suddenly showing Ao, a new location, a single one this time. With a short order the Hunter Nin squad quickly changed direction deeper into the jungle. Ao's mind was a whirlwind of though as he thought of the various jutsu and evasive maneuvers he and his team had to perform to give the five-person sealing team to rip the tailed beast away from its vessel and encase it into a crystal cylinder that would be sent to Kiri by the survivors of the expedition. If there was one of course if not a smaller team trailing behind them at a safe distance for a battle between s rank titans, would then recover it and send it home. Psy2 was an old war hawker hound depending on who you ask, so he was a bit suspicious on the reason why their tracking map suddenly showed a single location as the location of their target, which coincidentally happened to be deep within a jungle, an ideal battlefield for a Kanohan in. Hastening his step Psy2 approached the leader of the mission, Derry of the Back Lightning. The map now shows a single location and forms Psy2. That's good. Where? Asked Derry. In the middle of nowhere, 12 miles northwest of here replied Psy2 and pleasantly saw Derry catching on to the implications. An ambush Derry stated foolish of the boy to think we'd fall for it. What troubles me more is that he knew we were coming warned Psy2, nothing suggested the boy was that good. He might just have encountered a patrol from other villages and choose to confront us in his own terms, reasoned Derry. Perhaps nodded Psy2, or perhaps the boy has inherited his father's cunning. Do you seriously believe that he is the spawn of that man? Snorted Derry. It all fits I to explain his intelligence, the fact that he is the Jinchuriki and his follicular features. There are a lot of people who have those features countered Derry. Yes, the Namaka's clan being among them while the rest come from the frozen wastelands of the land of Skylights reason Sai to, so which is more likely, him being his son or him being an orphan from the northern wasteland. Well, I suppose you might be right, but it doesn't change our mission, stated Derry, get 10 Anbu, and move forward no further than 500 meters, no closer than 200. Immediately saluted Saitu as he flashed away in a speed that was hard to believe came from an old man. But the single hand seal, the original Naruto sent a signal to the remaining 43 clones to begin phase 3 of his assault plan. Immediately five of them moved to a secluded area and began riding seal with a speed that was frightening. Normally he would have simply guided the chakra, but this particular seal required a rough edge that nothing but a human hand could give it. His chakra sense had already gone haywire, so he could not be certain on when the flying machines would return, so he had to adapt his plan to allow for maximum protection against a surprise aerial attack. The seal being drawn was one of his own design that instead of creating a big impenetrable barrier as most seal masters did, it worked more subtly by creating two pockets of air, one hot and the other cold, which would later be merged, and with some help, would create a level 6 storm that while harmless to the titanic city, it would obliterate all the flying machines. With that done, Naruto stepped out of the shadows concealing his form and drew a single three helix blade that was his own attempt to replicate the legendary sword of the sage, and although it failed, it still produced a weapon that could bend space-time itself to get to the target. Coating the blade with a thin layer of chakra, which caused it to glow with an ethereal green color, he started slashing at thin air. Too bad for the protecting shinobi that the glow was not just for show, but was similar to his ultimate one-hit kill technique, which he couldn't use if he planned to use the flying thunder god jutsu, which he had mastered to a degree that while not as good as his father's, it made fighting him a health hazard well more than usual that is. Seeing the original literally cut a swath in the enemy forces his clones took advantage to tunnel the city with extensive use of the spiraling ring. Their aim was only one, disable the artificial tailed beast before it could so much as stir in its hibernation. His own on the other hand was capturing the leader of this place and gain insight in Orochimaru's body-stealing technique. 
the defenders were good, but unfortunately his S rank danger rating wasn't there just for show, as he dodged a hails of kunai sent his way and placed his smoking sword back in his inventory, its power depleted for the next hour or so. The Soren in attacked with a ferocity born out of desperation, while he fought with the clarity of one who had cast away his doubts and was driven solely by one aim, peace. In less than a minute he had killed 23 Jown in level shinobi, with nothing more than a kunai and his father's legacy. The sickness within him began to raise its head once more, but he ruthlessly squashed it, for he couldn't afford hesitation. The hole in the formation of the Soren Inn was quickly taken advantage of by his clone mini-army, and the carnage began in its truest sense. Moving quickly to avoid spilling his guts at the massacre, for there was no other word apt to describe what was happening. His senses quickly located the only chakra signature mixed with the artificial dark chakra the Zero created. He encountered the man at the gates of the room where the Zero was held. Not giving the man a chance to speak he flashed at the man, but his kick was stopped by a hand that was way too strong for an old man. He was thrown into the wall and threw it with nothing more than a flick of his hand. A quick observe revealed the man's strength to be in excess of 400. Cursing his bad luck for meeting somebody both stronger and faster than him, he launched one of the three-pronged kunai that he had in his inventory and teleported to it once it hit the ground, launching a spiraling ring to the clearly surprised man. The insane vitality, concentrated on body density, the man held made sure that he came out of it with minor injuries, but the levels of artificial dark chakra were drastically reduced. Grinning behind his mask, Naruto prepared another spiraling ring, but didn't have the chance to fling it to the man because his stomach meets Shino's knee. Quickly recovering from the staggering blow, Naruto backflipped and launched an overpowered spiraling ring at Shino, who like an overconfident fool, stood and took it head on to prove to his opponent that he was invulnerable. Shino was quickly reminded he wasn't immortal or invincible when the spiraling ring exploded with such power that it shocked the entire city and threw him through the titanium chakra metal alloy door like it was made of tissue paper. Not giving his opponent a moment to recover, Naruto unleashed wood release. Dance of Kanohanasakuyaheim, a rather powerful jutsu created for one reason and one reason alone. The capture and immobilize an enemy and not even the powerful dark chakra inside Shino's body made any difference, as the plants of the jungle around the city rose to put a stop to the abomination polluting the world around them. The giant sleeping behemoth that was the Zero tried to wake without the necessary energy and would have succeeded had it not been for four of his remaining clones that sealed it away with the secret Uzumaki art. Heavenly chains of Tsukiyomi which while too weak to imprison any of the tailed beasts above the three tails, was quite effective on the artificial being. The four shadow clones dispelled due to exhausting their chakra because while highly effective against minor nuisances the seal was very crude, requiring massive amounts of chakra to properly function. Picking up the crystal that had manifested from the sealing process he slumped to the ground using the wall to slow his descent and gazed at the bright yellow crystal, the same color as a wisp of his own pure and refined chakra, with black dots that moved across its surface, proof of the success of their mission. After a few minutes the bar was almost full again, and as he stood up again a massive explosion shocked the now defenseless city. The Kumo squad lead by Derry and Killer B was the first one to arrive on the battleground, for that would be the only word that would do justice to what they saw there, well there was also Slaughterhouse, but it doesn't sound quite as good does it? But the few hand signals Derry gave the orders for his squad, and they quickly hid themselves and waited for the remaining part of their expedition to arrive. They didn't have to wait for long as within a minute and a half Saitu and Dadai had arrived, and with a quick use of reflected light, they were told where to find them seeing as a chakra burst would be useless due to the air being practically drowning in chakra. Everything had been already planned and practiced so many times that it had become practically a muscle memory, but that didn't stop every one of the members of the Kumo expedition to feel their hearts hammering in their chests as Killer B flashed through the hand seals that would tear a hole in the victorious Mask Shinobi. Lighting release. Cannon Bolt Killer B shouted as he finished his hand seals and a single bolt of lightning, which was wide enough to take an entire tower of the half-sunken city, slammed onto the city with a deafening boom. Barry while having to be more careful about his chakra reserves, was still highly more efficient than Killer B could ever be, so he contributed with a legendary black lightning release. Battery strike and from his hands dozens of streams of black-colored lightning slammed into the surviving mask shinobi. The puffs of smoke assuaged his fears that the Jinchuriki had somehow founded an organization of highly skilled shinobi or what would have been worse, he allied himself with one. The rest of the team, most of their fears assuaged, speed forward toward the half-ruined city. The four SA rank shinobi weren't so assured of that, and they weren't proved wrong, as a little over a dozen masked shinobi appeared between the ruins and proceeded to launch a massive collaboration jutsu. Fire release ember bullet were masterfully combined with wind release. Atmospheric bash and water release. Rainfall to produce hundreds of mini streams of superheated steam. 
luckily not all of them died as of the 45 Anbu that went there in what they supposed was a secure ground, not that Derry blamed them as he himself hadn't sensed them at all until they attacked, only 13 survived, and of them 4 had gotten some rather nasty looking burn wounds. Saitu didn't wait for the shock of seeing an army killer performed right before their eyes, but unleashed his own army killer, fire release. Molten Phoenix Heart which quickly dispelled most of the clones, but he was sure some of them survived. After all he had gotten a bit rusty on that particular technique, though he fancied himself a tad bit better than the late heroes in Siratobi, or as Kumo knew him the Ash Dawn. Ao wasn't prepared to find himself in full-blown battle, let alone one in which an army killer that hadn't been seen since the last war, had been fired. His squad of hunter nin was quickly dispatched to deal with the Kumo Anbu. Ao himself prepared himself for what would probably be his last battle, as he made a beeline for Saitu of Kumagakur. He was stopped as a sandy-haired kid, a shinobi of Kumagakur stopped him by shooting a few lightning-enhanced kunai that he barely avoided. A single seal he completed while mid-air, activated his by Akugan, and even as he landed in a crouch, Ao inspected the enemy. What he saw made him pale, the kid's reserves were insane, almost as large as that of his Jinchuriki teammate. Cursing silently he activated the famed Kurigakur no Jutsu, but that was not to be as lightning quickly flowed through the mist and into his body, causing him to be temporarily paralyzed. Faster than thunder, Derry appeared behind the Kirinin and decapitated him only for the body to turn to water. But the chuckle Derry speed forward to exit the mist and wasn't disappointed as his guess proved correct, the Kirinin was practically committing suicide as he had engaged the old Warhawk. With a scoff he turned toward the sky from where a rain of kunai enhanced by explosive tags of quite some quality fell upon the undefended shinobi on the ground. But an impressed whistle he saw as the explosive tags exploded and turned the entire rubble into. Well more rubble only this one was on fire and smoking quite a bit. A few hands seal later one of his own original creations came out black lightning release. Blazing thunderbolt which tore through the heavens and more than half the flyers went down, while the rest were having some difficulty with the static electricity which the black lightning bolt had dispersed in the atmosphere. His next technique was interrupted by a mop of blonde hair charging for him which he easily sidestepped, only to be kicked in the back with enough force to send him flying through a tree and land into the wet mud. Okay, so things had spiraled out of control, not only were there at least three S ranks in his proximity, but they also had a small army with them. That simple fact would have been enough to demoralize anyone else, but he wasn't anyone else he was Naruto Uzumaki Otisuki, and he had a long history of getting out of impossible situations unscathed. Being the man who had until recently been flinging admittedly cool-looking lightning jutsu. His black lightning was somewhat troubling as it spoke of the ability to control and compress lightning chakra to a level that was even beyond him, oh well he could always use spells if things got sticky, though he hated them. He was a ninja not a wizard or sorcerer or any of the other thousands of classification for magic users. The Kumo Nin was back up faster than he expected, meaning that since he wasn't wearing his thundering trench coat, the shinobi was a tad bit beyond the 190 points in speed. Dodging to thin strip of lightning, normal one, he used wind manipulation to launch of the ground, breaking through the sound barrier, and intending to turn the Kumo Nin to mush, through the sheer force of impact alas, that was not to happen, as an octopus tail slammed into him and sent him flying deeper into the forest. Golden chakra chains caught him in mid-air and threw him back toward the octopus tentacles, Kurama's own bloodlust temporarily overpowering his own senses, meaning that he was facing the only tailed beast that was even close to the power of the fox he even split as it was, the eight tails, Jayuki. The five tail chakra cloak covered him just before impact the two Jinchuriki meet with enough force between the two of them to turn mountains to dust, the forest around them, turning into a cloud of dust, wood and steam from the water puddles nearby. Derry had barely survived, and he had had to use his imperfect lightning armor to escape the explosion as the two titans clashed. Sensing the oppressive chakra of the tailed beast, he started applying black lightning chakra over his body to prevent it from shutting down at the sheer amount of chakra in the air, which in fact was the most dangerous thing about battling a tailed beast. Their ability to simply unleash enough chakra to equal the output of a small army without even denting their chakra reserves, and that chakra sought to dominate the lesser chakra of humans, and only the strongest willed, and those with immense chakra reserves, could hope to survive. Interesting, Jayuki came the distorted voice of Naruto Uzumaki, the chakra of his tailed beast coloring it, you actually accepted one of them. So have you, you fool came the distorted voice of Killer B, as his tailed beast temporarily took over Surrender Brother, and this will be painless. Spineless coward spied it out Kurama as it located his enemy and shot out faster than any shinobi ever could, so afraid to fight me. An idiot as always came the reply from the eight tails as their chakra tails slammed together creating a crater and blowing a speeding dairy away. 
you're the idiot, brother for like you I too have gained new tricks since last time, spoke the deep voice of the nine tails, as one of his tails turned into a massive chakra hammer that pounded on the recovering version 2 chakra cloak of Killer B. You're not the only one bellowed out the eight tails as ink came out of his tails and formed a crude kinetic seal, draining most of the immense energy out of the attack, but still getting hit and further enlarging the crater. Nice tricks laughed the nine tails, the voice causing a chill to run down the spine of Derry, but do you have what it takes to survive the big leagues, and with those words the chakra output skyrocketed, taking the breath out of Derry's lungs and setting the trees in a hundred meters radius on fire. The end. So how was this part, I hope you like it. And if you like it share this part with your friends and like the video too. And don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily awesome fanfiction. Okay it's time for me to go. Bye bye.